Akosia from the OT region, accompanied by Queen Mother Nana Alia Isonyinacha as a brother first. Akosia from the OT region, walking gracefully with the Queen Mother all the way from the OT region. Nana Alia Isonyi Nacha Atakura, the first. Bangawego. Hello Ghana, Oti Mantin for the Ghana Adishima Musum Fakusia in Yumi Chiamu. I am so excited to talk to you tonight about my project, which is a mentorship intervention program aimed at enhancing female advancement in education and preventing teenage pregnancy in my region and hopefully Ghana at large. Let me say a big, big thank you to you out there for voting for me, for cheering me on, supporting me and pushing me this far. Akosia is so grateful. Obadie in Shramupi. Asida Kesi Kesi Enkoma, the Oti Regional House of Chiefs. Nana Impravese Muna the fourth, and then Nana Okofro Boba for Asante, President and Vice President of the Oti Regional House of Chiefs, respectively. Mibo Mudiya Nana Nana Mr. Semoma Masida into the whole Oti Regional House of Chiefs. So Oti Regional Hema for Nana Safo Arewa Miami Mahema Rara Mahema. Nana Otubia of Inkonya and President of the Queen Mothers Association of Oti Region. Nana Ousu Afari in Koswahine of Rara, Dr. Steven Nyakun, Nana Abankwa Benjamin Da, Konkonti Hine of Okani Asi, Midamu Nina Asi, Honorable Kofi Adams, Honorable Kwajonyan Ponabwaji, Miami Minister, Honorable Joshua Mayena Makubu, Edini Diebe Bre, Mufan Cheme Simambo Modina. Mr. Obwadi, your own Shiramu, Akosia is so grateful. Now, Miss Re, you do grand finale. Tonight is the night. I promise you my 110%. And to Miss Re, please keep voting. Tonight, the info your last in Gusu. Dial star 713 star 13 hash and follow the prompt or simply download the TVP reality app from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. Obwadi, your Shiramu, if you Akosia, say, me Damwasi. Akosia has closed by Sam Collections with hair by Best and More Limited. Ladies well groomed by African American Beauty Academy. Inspiring beauty beyond borders. Accessories by Magdal Kutu. Bangawego! baby you have behind you. I'm very well yourself. How is life? Life hasn't been easy with me. In fact, this is the third child I'm having. Mm -hmm. No work, no money to fend for my kids and myself. I've been able to go back to school, but look at you. Trust hey. me, I understand your plight. But you know what? The only difference between you and I is the fact that I got positive mentors to guide me on my journey in life. I had mentors to also guide me through my path. Your journey would have definitely been different. But it's never too late. You can always get yourself some mentors to guide you. Wow. Would you be open if I connected you I to one? very much Great. appreciate that. <laughs> that is my friend, Mansa. She dropped out of school due to teenage pregnancy. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. In 2007, when I moved back to Rara and joined the Anglican Primary School in Class 6, I learned that the girl's prefect had dropped out of school due to teenage pregnancy. The students spoke very fondly of her because she was a very brilliant student. We visited her a number of times and tried to encourage her to join us back in school, but to no avail. A year later in JHS 1, I was privileged to be selected together with three other students to represent our school in an HIV AIDS peer education workshop, where we learned a lot about reproductive health, leadership, and for the very first time, we learned that pregnant girls are allowed to enroll in school per the re-entry policy of the Ghana Education Service. 
After the workshop, we were then charged as peer education facilitators to lead peer group discussions and other activities with our peers. It was my first experience of formal leadership. And ever since then, I have never been afraid to take up space. I also learned a lot about my sexuality, and so it helped me to make informed choices over the years. I also developed a sense of responsibility to impart into others what I am privileged to learn. And so here I am, over 10 years later, on Ghana's most beautiful platform, seeking to give to others the same opportunities which I was privileged to enjoy early on. I never stopped wondering. I never stopped wondering how different master's kids would have been if we knew what we knew at the time and used that information to encourage her to join us back in school. So that is how the Becoming Mentoring Project was birthed. It is a mentoring intervention project aimed at reducing teenage pregnancy and ensuring the advancement of females in education and leadership. Ghana needs to see more women on decision-making tables. Per data from the Ghana Health Service, 110,000 teen pregnancies were recorded in the year 2020 in Ghana. OT region recorded 3,970 pregnancies. 2021 has not ended yet, but we have already recorded 2,709 pregnancies in my region. Isn't this alarming? But the saddest aspect is that over 95% of these girls who get pregnant drop out of school due to family rejection and stigmatization. And so this year alone, over 2,500 girls are likely to have dropped out in my region. So what is the relevance of mentoring and how is it going to help? I'll start by telling you who a mentor is. A mentor is someone who can support and guide you. A mentor acts as an advisor or a coach to a less experienced person known as a mentee or a protege. Good mentors are able to share their life experiences, wisdom, and technical expertise with their mentees. The Becoming Project seems to provide a safe space where young girls can connect with each other while learning from more experienced adults. It will help the girls see and realize that, indeed, the future is a possibility. The program will cover three main areas. Education and career development, reproductive and sexual health, leadership and personal development. We'll cover topics such as soft skills, presentation, leadership, sexual behavior, amongst others. The program would, con would constitute biannual workshops whereby girls will go through fun, educative, and interactive workshops in these three areas. Now, the girls having been empowered will then be given the necessary tools and materials required to go back to their communities and serve as peer mentors. An empowered woman, they say, empowers others. The Becoming App and website would also provide an avenue where girls can log on to, share their experiences in confidence, get information, and be paired with compatible mentors. The program would also provide access for teen mothers to be reintegrated back into society. The expected outcomes of this program are improved academic achievement, improved social behavior, enhanced sense of responsibility, leadership, reduced cases of teenage pregnancies, amongst others. And but thanks to institutions such as the UNFPA, the Rebecca Foundation, the Ghana Health Service Safety Net Program, the Girls' Education Unit of the Ghana Education Service, we are sure that we can bring this to fruition. We would also be reaching out to corporate Ghana, government institutions, family and friends. And in a few months' time, the becoming project so that together we can empower the next generation of young girls and create a new narrative. In conclusion, let me challenge every woman out there, especially those who have shattered glass ceilings and made it to the top, to take it upon yourself to empower at least one young lady and mentor her so that we will create a new narrative. The narrative that women are our own enemies and that when a woman makes it to the top, she does not want to see others with her is a cliche. On that note, let me say a big thank you to the likes of Louisa Afrane Okese, Irabna Braye, Joanna Dakwa, Miriam Kabute, Miss Mosso, amongst others, who have played a very important role in my life. I say to you that I am very grateful and will surely pay it forward. To my fellow young ladies, we will surely meet at the very top. Thank you.
folks here representing the Oti region. Now let me move to our judges and find out what their thoughts are on Akosia's presentation. Jibodi, what are your thoughts? Okay, Akosia, intelligence as work, at work as usual. You eloquently presented um, your um, concept and you made women proud. Well done. Thank you. And then Auntie Linda. Akosia. Auntie Linda. All right. I think you did a good presentation. You gave the scope of your project. You gave your partners. You even mentioned about finance. But, you know, in these days, people's attention span are very short. So although you gave a lot of information, I'm sure people tuned off at some point. You know, so you could have packaged it in another way. That would have been more exciting. And we would have so gotten the message. You understand? But well done. Thank you. Thank you. yeah your question. Now, some experts and practitioners in the tourism sector hold the view that the presence of COVID-19 creates an opportunity to improve domestic tourism. Now, suggest two actions that, in your view, if taken well, would ensure that Ghanaians travel across their country more often than they do now. Thank you very much. The onset of the pandemic, COVID-19, actually brought a lot of things to a halt. It's forced a lot of, so many governments to close their borders. And so it restricted the movement of people and brought certain types of business to a halt. The tourism sector in many countries, Ghana inclusive, was heavily dependent on foreign visitors or tourists and again I would repeat that it has taught people to look within so now that borders have been closed people traveling has been restricted it means that there's an opportunity for us to develop our tourism sector which is actually very rich by the way there are so many tourist attraction sites some untapped some already developed yet Ghanaians do not know about it I would say one of the Things that we need to do is, by, is, by, is to start by developing these tourist attraction sites. Tap into the ones that we have. I can <laughs> tap into the ones that we have. Every community, every region has certain opportunities for local tourism. My region, for one, we have certain caves in the Buem area. There's a volcanic lake in Konya. We have waterfall spread all over the region. And so if the government can look at developing these areas and then improving infrastructure leading to these places, it would encourage people to travel more. Because if I want to take a break from work and then I know that, okay, I can make it to the OT region, the roads are good, if the roads are better, and I can make it to the OT region in, say, a few hours, I would rather take that and then take a breather. Another thing we have to do after developing these places, I believe, is to promote them, publicize them. And by promoting, I mean consider all aspects of marketing, PR, media, everything. We can consider digitalization in terms of promoting it. The Ghana Tourism Authority has done a great job at doing that. If you go to their page, you realize that there's a 360 travel for every tourist attraction site in Ghana, where you tap and then you can easily say, okay, this is what I would see when I get to, let's say, Blee, when I get to Chabobo, this is what I see when I get there. It gives you, and another thing that COVID-19 did was to make the world more digital than it, it was. And so if I want to go to a place, I would want to look at how, I would want to look at it on the internet first. Then in terms of promotion again, we can consider partnering with local influencers, celebrities, if I should hear, if I'm a Shatawale fan, I will not do. <laughs> but if I should hear that Shatawale is performing at Chabobo National Park, you would travel all the way from Cape Coast to Chabobo because Shatawale is performing. It is a way to promote it. And so let me leave it there. I think Ghana's tourism sector has a great opportunity for domestic tourism. Thank you. Uh, Kosia from the OT region. <laughs>